Gardening with children can be a wonderful experience, both for you and the kids, as long as you keep it fun and not some grueling chore. It also helps if you start them off gardening as young as possible. I'm Barbara Damrosh, and if you'll stay with us for the next half hour, Elliot Coleman and I will share some of our experiences gardening with children on Gardening Naturally. Deciding where to put a children's garden, give it prime garden space. Don't put it in some neglected corner. We've got it in a nice sunny part of the vegetable garden here, next to the compost heap. It's not a terribly big garden, about 13 by 16. It's just big enough to give us room for some really interesting garden projects, like this big bean teepee, a nice row of strawberry plants. But if you had one young child taking care of a garden by him or herself, I wouldn't give them more than maybe this three foot by four foot plot here, or even the one next to it, which is only two and a half by three. A child could plant several different crops in this little space. It wouldn't be that hard to take care of. Now, Elliot and I have four children, but they're pretty grown up now. So when we want to garden with some small children, we have two neighbors down the road, luckily, who can come and give us a hand. Hi, Seth. Hello, Shia. You're going to give me some help today? Good, you brought the seed box? We're all ready to go to work. I think we ought to make a salad, and I think we ought to plant some lettuce to go with it, and some radishes, would that be good? Okay, so we're gonna have to start some seeds. Okay, now why don't you help me do that? Shia, let's go over here. and see what kind of seeds we've got. When you're planting seeds with kids, you know, it, all, it helps to have big seeds. Now, when we did these sunflowers, they were really easy to handle. But when you get to things like lettuce, we got some butter crunch lettuce here that we are able to find in pelleted seeds, which simply means that they have made these seeds. Yeah, I'm dropping a few, but oh, there you go. Good girl. Thank you. Um, they've made these seeds bigger by putting a coating on them. So you can put that in the cup, and I'll give you that one to plant. So if you get a cup. And they're, they're white, so you can see them against the soil really easily. Okay, there. Now, we'll make a little furrow with this lettuce. Nice and straight, like that. Okay. Now, Seth, why don't you start at that end? And Shia, one by one, you can put a few little seeds in that furrow. That's it. See, he's a real pro. Look how he knows just what to do. So do you. Oh, that's great. Okay, let's cover up the furrow now. That's great. While you're doing that, I'll make a label for this so we'll know what we planted here. And Seth, why don't you stick that right at the end of the row? So when you come into the garden, you can see it. Great. Now, we need to plant something else. And I have some carrot seeds that are also pelleted. So we'll do the exact same thing with the carrots. Got a girl. Good. <clears throat> now, while you're doing that, I can be making a row for some radishes. You keep on planting your carrots, Shia. The little shredded bark paths that we have in this garden are really easy and comfortable to sit on when you're working. But there's another reason for them. We think that when you have a children's garden, it's nice to be able to tell very easily what's a path and what's a bed. One way you could do that would be to edge the little beds with wood or make them into raised beds. But this is a nice system that only took about half an hour to put down. Okay. We're just about done. Seth, you can mark the radish row. Mm -hmm. Great. I get some potatoes to plant. Oh, oh, Seth, come help us with this. 
Seth, did you know that the potato you eat is actually the exact same thing that you plant to get new potatoes? Well, when you put it in the ground, instead of you eating it, that little sprout on top goes into the potato plant, and that eats the potato while it's getting big enough to make new potatoes. You guys come on over here, and we'll put these in the ground. Where do you think, Barbara? Right about here? Yeah, how many potatoes can we get in there? Oh, I think there's room for four. Let's see, I put one there and there, and then we have two reds for over here and over here. I'll show you guys. Once you get technique, take your hand, dig a hole as deep as you can get it down here. These guys like to be right down on the ground. Put it in, put the soil back over, and when you do it, make sure those little sprout things are on the top so they can grow right out. Let's see you do one, Seth. How about you, Shy? You want to do one? Right down in there, yeah. These, and remember, when you put it in, yeah, the little sprouts are on top. That's right. Good. And then they can grow right up. Okay? Here, let me help you get a little bit more hole here. Okay, put that one right in there. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, sprouts up. That's right. That's the sprout end right there. It's good. Going. Regular professional potato planter here, Barbara. <laughs> you got to be sure to come and dig these up when they're full grown. It's like an Easter egg hunt. You come in here and they're all hiding underneath there. Yeah. Just trying to dig a big Oh, all right, this oh, last oh. one. Oh, 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 oh. Big hole right there. Oh, oh. <laughs> end up. Okay, Barbara, what's next? Well, I have some scarlet runner beans. I thought those would be great growing up this teepee. Okay, you guys ready to plant some beans in the teepee? Yeah, let's go do that. Go for it. Well, you two can both go inside the teepee and plant from there. Oh, gosh. These are really beautiful beans. Look at the colors of those. Yeah. They're black and purple. That's really pretty. So let's give you each a cupful of bean seeds. And we'll make a circle furrow around each pole. And Seth, if you could just put those in a little circle. Okay. When these bean vines grow up these poles, they're going to cover this teepee with vines with beautiful red flowers all over them. And it'll be a lot of fun to sit inside. Hey, guys, I got some more bean excitement back here. I have a big, long pole, and I'm going to make a hole in the ground for it and stick it in. Look at how long that is, huh? Whoa! We're going to have Jack and the Beanstalk here. I got some beans in my pocket, and we're going to plant them and see if any of them can make it all the way to the top of this by the end of the year. You want to do that? All right, here's some beans. Here's some for you, Seth. Shai, you want to put some in? These are light, light blue. Yeah, these are pretty, aren't they? Okay, and they're going to have a contest. You can make it all the way up here, just like Jack and the Beanstalk. Yeah. Yeah, and push them into the ground. You know what? Next time, in the past, in the winter time, and next summer, I'm going to save some beans and pop and beans and maybe those are going to grow uh, bigger than this and go over the top. You know, that's, a, that's a good fun. idea. If these guys don't make it to the top this year, we'll try some of your new beans next year. It'll be a little contest, okay? All right, we got that done. Thanks for my extra beans. Thanks for your help. Look at That's a sunflower coming up. Oh, the sunflowers we planted are just starting to come out here. Look at that. Aren't they cute with their little seed leaves? Look! Yeah. It's a brand new tree. You can see the part of the seed. Yeah. 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 This is called mammoth sunflower, and these are going to get about three times as big as Seth, or four times as big as Seth. Make it, maybe they can have a contest with the pole here. See which one gets taller? Yeah. Before we're finished today, there's a few other seeds I want to plant with them. We've got some pumpkin seeds. Kids love pumpkins, and the seeds are nice and big and easy to handle. And so are these corn seeds. This is a variety of ornamental corn called Little Jewels. And the ears will have multicolored kernels like that. We won't get a huge crop, but the kids will be able to hang them on their door. So that'll be fun to do. And I also want to put some flower seedlings in. Shia particularly loves flowers, so we'll be sure to do that today. Oh, that's wonderful. Oh, thank you so much. These are wonderful. Look what we got here. We got some lovely blue violas. And oh, here's some with faces. Don't you love them when they have those? These are Johnny Jump Ups. They must call them that because they just jump up all over your garden when they go to seed. Well, I think we should plant them right here where you go into the garden. They'll look pretty along the edge of this bed. <laughs> Anyway, 
one can tell Seth and I are not the same size. And the same way, if we were playing baseball, I'd make sure he had a smaller bat, and even if he were playing in a league, a smaller diamond to play on, I want to make sure that he has tools that fit him when we're working together in the garden. Now, let's start with hand tools. These actually, the same hand tools I use, are great for kids. Does that fit in your hand, Seth? Yeah, good little hand rake. And here's a little trowel I modified. I use it. It also fits Seth's hand. So once we're talking about little tools, that's fine. They fit anybody. But now the longer handled stuff, you really want to cut it down for kids. For example, this is the hoe handle I would use. And it's really much too tall and awkward for Seth. He'd have a hard time out there. So what I did was modify one that would fit him. Stand up and let's show everybody here, all right? Now, the handle of a hoe works best, no matter how big you are, if it comes up to about your nose. Stick your nose up there when you stand up straight. Does it come about your nose? Yeah, that's close enough. And then it fits the size of the person, and they can work with it. And Seth can do a lot of work in the garden with that hoe. How about digging with a shovel? Think we can dig with this spade, I mean? Or this fork? Oh, that's a fork. Yeah, it fits your hand, fits your body. Good. How about the spade? Can we work with that one? Yeah. Look at that. We get tools that are the right size, and tools that are well made like this, not only can kids work with them and enjoy them, but when they outgrow them, you can keep them around. And then you'll have tools the right size when the grandchildren come along. And the rake. Think you can rake up the place with that? Smooth out the soil now that you've got it already? I think we got this, Seth. You agree? Yeah. You think we're equipped? Think we're ready to go to the garden? Yeah. Okay, you come with me, and we're heading out there with all our tools. <laughs> Shia, remember these flowers that we planted? It must have been a month and a half ago. Remember when we planted those? Look how pretty they are now. They've grown a lot. Do you, would you like to pick some and take them home to your mommy? Let's do that. Think you'd like some marigolds? The bright yellow ones? Hey, you want to pick some? You want to pick them right down at the bottom. That's right, you know how to do it, don't you? Yeah, I'll pick one too. There you go. Hi, Barbara. Hi. We're picking some flowers for her to take home to her mother. Oh, good. Seth and I came to check and see how the beans are doing on the Jack and the Beanpole bean. Can you reach oh. the top of that, Seth? Yeah. Look at Not them. quite. Well, they're taller than us, but look at the beans on the teepee. They're doing better than these, aren't they? Yeah. Yeah. Well, you still have a little time for it to grow another month of the season. I know. We're going to try another variety next year. Yeah, I think there's some extra tall beans. The corn is coming along. Look at the tassel, Shia. That means we're going to have corn ears right there. But they're not quite ready yet, are they? No, and the sunflowers for the birds, they're, they're taller than both of us together, aren't they, Seth? Look at that. Hot thing. Not bad. Oh, a ripe tomato. Hey, Shia, look at that. You want to pick that ripe tomato for me? See that pretty one in there? Here, I'll put you down and you can participate too, all right? Yeah, they're just starting to turn, aren't they? Just coming along. Oh, Shia's found a really rare. Yeah. Wow, look at that. That's fun. Sort of like an Easter egg hunt, isn't it? Look how big these potato plants have gotten. I bet there's lots of them to dig today. Hey, oh, right. Here, you take this fork and poke into the ground a little ways out from there. Okay, and now pull back on it and see what comes out of there. All right, and again, you want to go right in under the plant, all right? You got it loose? Okay, you loosen it up and I'll pull. Oh, looks like we found some Easter eggs, doesn't it? Yeah. Stick your hand down that soil there and let's see what we got. Oh, what a nice harvest. Here, here's a basket to put them in. You dig those right out of there. All right? We'll shake the dirt off them. How many do you think there are? Lots. Lots. Look at that, will you, Seth? Well, you got a farmer. great harvest here. I know. Isn't that impressive? Uh, <laughs> That's fantastic. What do you think would go well with potatoes if you were to eat them tonight? Would you like some carrots with them? Yeah. Oh, I know some carrots that look like they're yeah. about ready to be pulled, maybe. You come on over here and let's see if we can get some can carrots out of there. Tops. Hey, Shia, come on over here and help us pull carrots. Just put your hand right on that. You too, Seth. Why don't you grab that one? Okay. Oh, look at those beautiful things. Get a couple more there. Right out of the ground, yeah. Okay, now, we have potatoes and carrots for supper. We need something for dessert. What do you think would make a good dessert? Strawberry. 
strawberries. <laughs> All right. Come on over here. Let's pick some strawberries. Oh, don't they look nice? Uh, oh, here. those are nice. Put the basket right. in here, Barbara, so those guys can put strawberries yeah, in it. Yeah, put them in Shy's basket. There you go, Shy. There you go. See them? Pack them. I see some there for you, Shy. There's a nice red one. Well, I see a few more strawberries there, Seth. Can you reach over and get that one? Yeah, good. And I got this guy here. I think oh, we got him. Big one. Oh, nice strawberries. Okay, now you and I have one more job to do. Halloween's coming up, and we got to go put our name, or your name, I mean, on a pumpkin. What does Seth begin with? Mm, S. S. Okay. We're going to take my knife. We're going to find a nice pumpkin in here, and we're going to scratch an S into it with the knife. And you know what'll happen? Yeah. As that pumpkin grows, that S will get bigger and bigger and bigger, and the scar of it'll remain there. And you'll know that's your pumpkin at Halloween time. <laughs> hey, where's Barbara and, and Shia? Where have they gone? I don't know, they're here. Let's, let's wander around to the bean teepee and see if maybe they snuck inside. Yeah, looks like it. <laughs> Shia, they found us. Looks like it. Can you get in there, Seth? There's lots of room in this teepee because we built it so wide. Remember when we planted all those little bean seeds around the bottom of these poles? And look at it now. It's like a little house. All these pretty red flowers. You see some beans? Um, oh, I see a lot of beans. Look at this. That's a little right baby here. bean. You want to you want to pick them when they're bigger. Look at this. Oh, we got lots of beans. Look at this. Look at that. <laughs> yeah. There you go. Let's pick some and take those home too. This teepee is absolutely wonderful. It's it's not only fun to plant and watch it grow and pretty, but I find it a nice, cool place to sit on a hot day. Elliot, I think this bean teepee was the hit of the season. It's something that makes me want to do it every year. Yeah, I do it just for myself. Absolutely. There's some folks not far from here who have a garden just filled with ideas for kids, too. Well, here's the entrance to the children's garden. Emir has been working in this garden all season long, so he's going to be my guide and show me all the plants that they have growing here. I have watermelon. You sure do. And cantaloupe. Oh, I'm going to come back later when these get ripe. I love to eat cantaloupe. And I have radishes and onions and broccoli and green beans. It says, this is Peter Rabbit's patch. Did you do these signs yourself? Mm-hmm. Not all myself, though. What part did you do? I, I hammered them together and I did the writing. Oh, that's wonderful. Look, Emir, there's Peter Rabbit now. Flower patch. In the flower patch, yeah. And what a fine flower patch it is. I have mallows. Uh-huh. And carrots. For a border? Yeah, the carrot border goes all the way around. Mm-hmm. It's a great and idea. I, and I have some poppies. Oh, that, those are... And they, they look so like the carrots. The same orange color. Well, you've got all kinds of little things tucked down in there. I have a geranium. Mm-hmm. And I have cosmos. Beautiful cosmos. And poppies. Yeah, and some alyssum. Mm-hmm. Well, that's great. That's a love and a mist. Oh, what do we got here? Some green beans. Wow. They're ready, too. Oh, really? Can I pick one? Mm-hmm. I love to snack on things in the garden. Do you? Mm-hmm. Oh, that's delicious. Now, what's this garden over here, Amy? A pizza patch. A pizza patch? What's that for? That grew pizza with. Your girl pizza? I've got tomatoes and peppers. That's great. Well, everything you need to, to have a pizza, right? You like pizza? I don't know any kid who doesn't like pizza. Now, over here, there's one that says Emir's Patch. So this is obviously your own special one. And I noticed on the other side, it says the Sweet Tooth Garden. What does that mean? It has sweet things in it. Show me. It has strawberry plants. Mm-hmm. And, and parsley. And mint. Mint. And feverfew. Uh-huh. What's this over here? Toothache plants. 
tooth eggplant. What does this do? It makes your tongue numb. Oh, you're right. That's a funny feeling. What's this interesting plant with the little trellises in there? I've never seen that before. Sweet verbena. May I take a bite of that? Oh, that I love. That tastes just like sugar. Amir, what's that house I see over there? It's a sunflower house. A sunflower house. Can I see it? Mm. Let's go. Oh, this is great. It's sunflowers growing up some sticks that have been woven together. Mm -hmm. Come and sit and tell me about it. These are all going to be blooming in a few weeks, aren't they? I'd like to come back mm -hmm. and see that. Could you have some help with this garden, Emir? Mm-hmm. Did some grown-ups help you? Mm-hmm. Did some kids do it with you? Mm-hmm. Well, that must have been fun. And I bet you learned a lot, too. I learned a lot just going through this with you. I learned two plants I'd never seen before, a toothache plant and sweet verbena. Maybe I'll come back and have a pizza with you later, okay? Thank you for the tour. That was wonderful. Gardening with your children teaches them a lot of things about nature, about nurturing, about work. But you know, I think it teaches the grown-ups something, too, about how gardening is sort of magical, about how all these wonderful things come out of the earth. Also, it's just plain fun, and the results are delicious on the table. And so for now, goodbye and good gardening. Next on TLC, get started on easy home projects that anyone can handle here on Home Buddies. Then indulge your creative side with Debbie Stapley on Crafts & Company here on TLC.